We're on Hanover Street, a very short one block in Lowell, not far from St. Patrick's Church. This very modest building behind me, three-story building, was built in the early 1900s, but is probably best known, at least among some of us, as the headquarters of the industrial workers of the world during the Great Strike of 1912. Most people know about the Great Strike of 1912 uh, that originated in Lawrence, Massachusetts, downriver from Lowell. And it's been uh, known uh, in more recent generations as the Bread and Roses Strike. It began in late January 1912. And it's interesting the relationship between why the strike occurred and how the strike uh, was uh, carried out. What happened was that as of January 1912, the state's law limiting the hours of labor to something around nine hours and nine and a half hours uh, became enacted. And so when the workers first received their paychecks, the women at a particular mill in Lawrence, the Arlington Mill, saw that they had received less money. And in a very spontaneous manner, they basically walked out of the mill and they struck. And what was perhaps even more interesting was the fact that these women who led the strike were followed by virtually all the workers in Lawrence. That strike spread to other textile centers as well because it was very common for wages in one city and textile industry to work out the same way in another, and Lowell was no exception. In February of 1912, workers in Lowell struck. Um, and this was, again, at the same time that the strike was going on in Lawrence. So the IWW, which was really involved in leading the strike in Lawrence, settled here as well and directed a major part of the strike. The strike was um, really divided between the uh, immigrant workers who made up the mass of the factory workers and skilled workers that were in fact associated with the American Federation of Labor or the AFL. Now, the, none of the mills recognized the unions, but there was still some degree of power that the unions had in both cities. Uh, so what you had, though, was an interesting kind of tension between the craft-led AFL and the uh, mass workers that were being organized by the IWW. So in the end, what happened after a couple of months, again, there were a number of major figures associated with the strike in the IWW. Big Bill Haywood was here. Elizabeth Gurley Flynn was one of the wonderful, important um, leaders of the strike here in Lowell and Lawrence. So in the end, as typical of so many strikes, a compromise was worked out where essentially the mill corporations restored part of the wage cuts and the workers did accept that compromise. So it really was in many ways though a victory for the workers because most strikes like this one in 1912, most strikes like those in the end failed and the corporations won. But in this case, it really was much of a compromise, but the workers considered it a victory.